every single app, even if it's the exact same code base, goes through the same review process. And not necessarily we'll get the same answers coming out the other end of the app store <laughs> review process. Tomorrow of the stories, make three copies of your app and submit it three times <laughs> <laughs> uh, with slightly different names. But you, you can have, like a, well, before the in-app purchasing, you, it was very common to have a light version and a full version, and then have the full version get approved and the light version get rejected for something that's in both of the apps. Um, that, that story that's been repeated ad infinitum, uh, it's very, very, very common. Um, so is the process getting better with probably the first question? I would say from my own experience, yes, for the most part. Um, I think that Apple has implemented at least some kind of um, human filtering as far as what you're doing with the app. The, the more G-rated, the more um, easy, obvious the app is, the faster I've seen them go through the review process. Uh, for example, the, the app, one of the applications I've been working on lately is the Bible, and we routinely have three-day review process, in and out, just that quick. Even, I, even with, when we used a private API, we got an email saying, you're using a private API, next email, two minutes later, stop doing that, third email, two minutes later, app approved. <laughs> so basically saying next time we're not going to approve it with this private API, but go ahead and do it now. Apps that are closer to the edge, that are um, doing a lot of network traffic, that are doing video, that are adult oriented, those things I've seen are go through a lot more stringent review process. So if you're doing something that's clearly outside of the box or new, expect a fairly long review process. Um, if you're doing something that's just really super simple, then it, you, it's quite possible to do very, very fast review. Or if it's using one of their newer technologies, like we uh, wanted to get a push app in the store, we submitted right after WWDC and it took two months for it to get into the store. And it was like a couple of colleagues of mine also had the similar situation. And it was kind of like all our push apps kind of went live about the same time. So, um, and that sucks because people were really excited about push right around when that finished. I think our app could have actually sold more than 100 copies. Um, so, uh, but, uh, you know, but we've only had, we had, um, in the whole time I've worked with uh, App Store, we've done tons of updates to, again, around 10 apps. Um, we've only been rejected once, and it was a legitimate rejection. Um, we had uh, our very first app, it was one of the first 300 in the store, had uh, the um, iPhone in the icon. So, uh, and it, it had gotten reviewed, and and got into the store five times previous, but uh, Apple Legal decided, no, you can't do that anymore. So we had to rush and, and make a new icon. Uh, and then I got to WWDC, and they have a big wall with all these icons, and they're doing real-time sales in App Store, and uh, there was my old icon. So, um, so yeah, so that that sucked. But I, I would say that overall, you know, I have I have I don't have a, a horror story um, about App Store. And, you know, they're, they're people too, and I give them the benefit of the doubt, and they're getting hammered every day with, uh, with new apps. There are some real problems with it, but the vast majority of applications do get in, and usually, you know, not after months of waiting. So uh, it's something to be aware of, but not necessarily something that you should expect to happen most of the time or anything like that. Um, it's, I don't know, in my experience, it's often uh, almost a matter of course to expect one rejection for minor UI issues or something like that, but it's always something that's easily fixed and resubmitted the same day usually. Um, so it, it's something you need to plan for, but not something you necessarily need to expect. So uh, I guess be aware of it, but don't don't bank on it, as I'm saying. App name collisions is a big problem on the App Store. Um, if someone else happens to name their app widget, you can't name your app widget, which sucks for us because all the cool names are getting taken very quickly just like the cool domain names. Um, it used to be that you could name your app, let's say, Delicious Library on the App Store and then on the app on the phone itself call it Library and that was perfectly valid. Not anymore. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen any documentation changes on this, but I just recently got rejected, confirmed the rejection. We had an app uh, called, uh, what was it, Wine, the full name was Wine Guide. Oh, my wine guide. That's what it was. That was an application to you know to tour wine wineries things like that. And we, on the app, we just wanted to call it Wine Guide because otherwise we'd get the truncation. And we got rejected that because our app store name did not match our app name. So that's that sucks. 
A lot of the uh, a lot. Hold on, let me get of, let me get launched into Twitter real quick. A lot of that noise is coming from uh, very prominent indie developers who have been big on the Mac scene, and they're getting very noisy on the iPhone scene. But these guys are not seeing the same success on the platform that they are on the desktop, and. Uh, I mean, I definitely think they have there are legitimate beefs out there, but at the same time, it's like this is a new game, this is a new marketplace. It doesn't work just like um, it does on the desktop, and some indie devs are going to do better than others. We have to remember that I mean, the App Store has been around for yeah. eighteen months, exactly, yeah, and it's very new. So, so you said you had to wait like two months for one of your apps to get approved. That's pretty bad. Yeah, it sucks. And you know what? And honestly, I could have I could have raised a lot of help. But honestly, I got busy with other stuff. And I, it was a, a project that me and a colleague did at WWDC. It didn't take that long. And I just kind of lost focus on it. Um, I'll say this too. like, If you can meet someone at Apple and become their friend, if they have uh, worldwide developer relations on their um, emails they send to you, they're your friend. And uh, we had an app recently, actually, that uh, uh, Danielle, my wife, she did all the graphics on, and another developer here in town um, did the iPhone programming on. And they got the notice that they had been approved for sale, but that app wasn't showing up on the store. Um, turns out it was a problem with the TIFF they uploaded to the uh, iTunes Connect. Very weird problem. They, The only reason we found this out is because I sent an email to my contact there, and in 12 hours it was solved. So if you meet one of these people, make them your friend. I sent him a Christmas gift. Uh, these, are, these are important people to know. And you know, if you're gonna, you know, reach out and, and help someone else, like that was a real trusted friend. But like the client of theirs asked me for that that contact, and there's no way you don't you know give out these people's names because they'll hate you. So um, it's nice to know someone there, and you can and. You know, everybody says it's a real level playing field, and it's pretty level, but not really. Mm -hmm. So, meet someone at Apple. Go to WWDC. It's worth it. One thing I do out of habit, or we did used to do out of habit on the mobile roadie app, I don't know if they do it anymore, is whenever we submitted the app, we set it to the farthest date out possible, which was like December 31st, 2010. Um, just way out there, where, to the point where we'll get the approval notice, and then we can control its release date from there. So if you reset that to tomorrow, it will be released tomorrow. After so you can coordinate your PR and everything else. Exactly. You, you have to make sure you set it at least one day out. If you set it to the current date, it might just go into limbo. So you have to make sure it's always at least tomorrow. Okay, so yeah. coordinating we, PR, that's a good So thing. that trick still works. Set yes. it to the far future. So but the far for, future. Get for the initial release. Yes, for the initial not release. Not for updates. Yes. If you do that for an update, your yeah. app will disappear. Yeah, it'll disappear until that date occurs. We have an assisted communication uh, app. It's for autistic individuals. We uh, it was a first on iPhone. We you know did a press release, and that press release got picked up by tons of uh, of organizations for autism, and just kind of spiraled around. And that you know in our we had a marketing website, and and that was how we fueled sales. And sales actually have become fairly steady. It's a more expensive app, and. Um, I mean, it's nothing to retire on, but it, it, it makes money throughout the year. So you definitely have to think about ulterior ways of marketing. It's just not give it to the app store and, and go. Yeah, uh, despite what some people will say in their sessions about how to you know, get into the top 100, that's your money, that's your money. That's, it's the wrong way to look at it. Mm -hmm. The app store is your content delivery system. Mm -hmm. It's not your marketing <laughs> engine at all. So It used to be. It yeah. used to be. It's yeah. just because it was, it was so there was so little noise in there that it was you know it was easy to find you. But now it's it just think of it as your Amazon. You know Amazon's not going to market your your app unless you're very very lucky. Um, you have to market it, and then Amazon will sell it. Same thing with the App Store. You have to market somewhere else somehow. Um, whatever whatever you're you know the, the gimmick may be, but think of apps, Apple as just the retailer. They're just selling the app for you.